What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and today we're checking out a game called Songs of Six, which is pretty rad actually. I think this game is really, really good and I think you're going to want to check it out. This is the tech demo of a city builder that's being worked on that boasts a massive number of characters that are named and have activities and job assignments that's like, I don't even remember the number, but it's something like absurd. So games that you've played like City Skylines, like yeah, you can have a population of like 1.5 million or whatever. But that's just like a number on a, on a file somewhere, you know what I mean? In this game, little different. If you have 10,000 people in this game, you have 10,000 people and they all have like individual names and they all have individual jobs and like daily routines and stuff like that that they go about. And so it's kind of like RimWorld if you ramped up the city building aspect of it and you kind of tune down some of the RPG mechanics that exist inside of RimWorld. So anyways, let's play the game and check it on out. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And welcome to our city. You have arrived at this new and promising land. But can you tame it and prove yourself a worthy king? Let's find out. At your disposal are a few subjects and some building materials. There's also the throne. The throne is the center of your city. Fair enough. Well, here's our city right here in case you were wondering. We can zoom out. We can take a look at it. Right now we've started out with probably like 100 fruits, 100 vegetables. I'm rounding up roughly, okay? I know how to do math. I just don't feel like doing it right now. Like 60 grain. Some stone, we've got some cut stone, we've got whatever those are. I honestly have no idea, maybe chalk or something? I'm not sure what that is, I've never used that resource. And we've got ourselves cut wood, and then we've also got raw wood hanging out. We've also got an assortment of citizens that are just like hanging around doing nothing. And so it's time to get them to work. Let's go ahead and start out, I'm gonna put down a woodcutter. The woodcutter is gonna go right here and murder all of those trees. So there's our little wood cutting icon so that we know that he's ready to go. Oh, it's cotton. That's what that is. So we have cotton fields, apparently. Uh, we do need to plant some crops. So like, I'll probably go like, yeah, we'll do like a five by five of fruits right there. And then we'll probably do like a five by five of like vegetals there. And then we'll probably have like a five by five of cotton right there. And then we'll probably have like a five by five over here of like grain. So that looks pretty good. Did I not finalize the cotton? Sometimes I forget to click the little prompt. There we go. I finalized the cotton. And so what you will see is that as we turn the game on, these little dudes will launch themselves to action. It will auto assign jobs. So you don't really need to worry about that. As you can see, it's employed two woodcutters. So they're gonna go out and chop some trees. You can see them doing that right there. These all require one farmer, as I recall. Right? I think they're just building right now. But anyways, these all require one farmer once they're built. And those farmers will like sit around and do their thing and clock their game and kind of hang out. I, I think that we have a really, really good city going right now. I think we've got good options. We're about midway through morning right now. It's like nine in the morning. So that's good. We forced our guys to get up a little bit earlier than I would have liked. But as you can see, they're planting crops. These guys are still not done with their tree. Let's speed this up a little bit more so you can see the process happen in real time. Yeah, you dig that soil, little serfs. You dig it. Can you dig it? Yes, me lord, because I have to. Uh, it is now officially nighttime. These guys are going to sleep on the ground for right now because that's what they deserve. That's what they get for being peasants instead of being born the king by divine right. As you can see, wood has started to pile up from all the random little trees over here. That's a good thing. What is that? A stag beast. Apparently there's a stag beast. There's a Denorus, which is like some kind of weird peacock waterfowl looking thing. Eh, whatever. He can hang out over there. I'm fine with it. Uh, we're going to need to build some buildings. We're not really going to have a lot of choice in that regard. Buildings are kind of important in this game. Everything important needs to be indoors in this game. So we're going to start out with a storehouse, I think. So we'll make like a big storehouse like right over here that just kind of goes out. Can we talk about how awesome the music is in this game? I would love to talk about how rad the music is. Maybe I'll make this a dormitory. I haven't really decided, but it'll be something. 
So there you go. That's all ready to go, and what you'll see is the little workers will start to put that in. Uh, the building designation that we use is basically for them to do a full building. You've got a couple. I'll let them build a little slower while I talk about this. So you can actually build a wood combo, which means that it builds the ceiling and it builds the floor and the walls all at the same time. Or you can just do the wall if you want to, or you can just do the ceiling if you wanted to make some kind of awning. It's up to you, but this combatizes both of them and puts them together so that you don't have to mess with it. So anyways... They're building the whole package right now. The entire package is being constructed. So if you are interested in packages, welcome to the Nerd Castle. I got you covered. All of our wood is gone. Feels bad. You guys go chop some trees, man. Here, help out with this. These wood choppers are doing a crappy job. You guys come over here and help. I need all hands on deck to finish this building about as fast as possible. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Mash out some little cubits over here. I don't know what you measure things in, but I assume it's in biblical terms. We measure in cubits. Well, the crops are looking okay. It looks like they're kind of coming up. They're shuffling them around right now. What are you doing? Just out here in the land, shuffling me crops, me lord. I would like the carrots to be over there, and they're currently right here. And I'm like, all right, fair enough, man. Far be it from I to tell you your business. Do what you gotta do, familia. Oh, we've got some rain coming in right now. We've actually, we're making very slow progress, and I would like for the progress to be faster. You guys like dying or something? Please stop. If you're dying, don't do that anymore. That's my advice to you. If you're dying, stop doing that. Well, we got wood for days, so that's good. Is our storehouse done? Come on. Yeah, there we go. So the storehouse is finished. Now we need to actually build, like, a facility, and we can do that from right here. And so, like, if we take that rubber band box and we just put that in there, we go pow. Now we got to choose the furniture that goes inside of here, which for the moment is crates. And so we'll go with a crate right there, crate right there, a little crate action right there. Can I fit more crates in here? Yeah, you can kind of just, like, shuffle them around a bit. It doesn't matter if they're even. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't fly at all. So we've got six crates right there, which means we can store six different resources inside this building. Also, as a bonus, what you'll see is that every building has its own flooring. And so they'll come in and they'll start putting... Oh, it's snow. Is that snur or is that rain? I actually do think with the rain effect, they're going to have to make that a little bit smaller in the final game. Because if you're running the game on fast forward, the rain almost completely, like, occludes your vision. It makes it very, very difficult to see. You guys doing your thing in here? Yeah, there we go. Stack up them goodies. Get it done, dudes. Uh, this will get done a little bit faster once they chop down all the trees. I'm just trying to make sure that we're safe and taken care of as far as wood goes. There you go. See, you can see I'm putting in the floor right now. The storehouse is going to look all official and beautiful. That's what I like to see. Getting a little low on stone, though, so we're going to have to come up with a solution to that problem pretty shortly, too. These guys are like masters. Yeah, get that laminate put in. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Now we got crates. So with this building right here, what you need to do is each of these crates will hold one resource or two resources. Like, if you want, you can actually assign multiples of these. And each crate will hold 50 resources. So, for example, we could say that we do want to fetch wood, and we would like two slots for wood. So two of these crates are going to be designated for wood. And then the other thing that we can do is I want one of these to be for corn, I want one of these to be for fruit, and I want one of these to be for maybe grain. That sounds pretty good. And then we'll see if we have any crates left over. How many crates did I get down in here? I've got five crates. You guys didn't build... I thought we had a sixth crate. Okay, well, apparently this storeroom is going to be horribly inefficient for right now. I'm sorry if you're one of those people that plays a lot of Factorio, but Splatty's going to disappoint you for a little bit with his forward thinking. Or lack thereof. And as you can see, they're relocating all the resources. Ah, rumor has spread about a good and just ruler who seems to know what, how to get things done. People from all over six have decided to leave their rural lives and immigrate to the promise of a new city. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. You got to believe in the king. The king's got you covered. So as you can see, they're going to relocate all of the goods that they can. They'll also stockpile inside of here if all these slots are full. And so we've actually gained ourselves quite a bit as far as space is concerned. Oh, all of our crops came in too. Nice. Well, that's good. What are you guys doing? You guys, like, partying over there? What do you got? Oh, we got more villagers. I was going to say, what are you guys doing over here? You, like, partying? Or, like, what's happening? Uh, we need some stone. So I'm going to set up a stone cutter over here. We've got a stone cutter right there. So we can put a quarry. Like, yeah, right there. Exactly. We had a quandary. Now we have a quarry. We're good to go. 
and all of that stuff is not going to be stored, right? So we've got like what, like 50 stockpiled right there. This game does have a lot of menus. I'm hoping later on they add like a little menu up here that tells you like a little tab right here that flips down and just tells you how many of everything that you have. Because if you want to find out how many goodies you have, you basically have to click on the stockpile. Or I think you can go to the state management and then you can go to resources, I think. And, like, it'll tell you how many you have stored up kind of inside of here, but not really. That might be your production, too. There's some things that I'm a little bit hazy on in my hour or two of playing the game that hopefully, as I get more experience, will become easier to figure out. So our storehouse is done. Uh, the next thing we probably want is a place for people to sleep, because they tend to get kind of grumpy when you don't give them a place to sleep. And so we need to designate an area over here. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong thing. I got to make a room first. All right, let's make room. Make way for Prince Splatty. There we go. We'll put that right there. That looks good. And so we'll set them to work kind of. We've got a lot of workers that are just like idling and doing nothing right now. So I think that'll help out. Did we... Are these guys working over here? They are. It got the job assigned. Hell yeah. That's what I like to see. That's the good stuff right there. I still haven't figured out how to add more crates to this place. So, like, as far as I can tell, when you build a building, that's the only shot you have to decorate the interior of it. I'm sure there's a tab or a button around that I just haven't found yet for furniture, but, like, you can't add... So we can fit more and more crate inside of there, but I haven't figured out exactly how to do that yet. Like, if I wanted to add another crate, I would assume it's in this menu somewhere... But I ain't found it yet, so I'm going to have to disappoint you on that front. This game doesn't have a tutorial. I've been mashing through it for a couple of hours before I recorded this episode, but there are still little, like, dots and tittles that I haven't figured out yet. Still working on that. Uh, we can manage the maintenance of this place if you want to. Uh, everything degrades in this game, and so people are going to have to come along and maintain it eventually. For right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can place some beds in here. I think that's a really good idea, so let's do it. Yeah, we can kind of do something like that right there. Yeah, that looks good for the dorm. Perfect. And then I can't really put anything over there, but I can put one... Okay, I can put one, like, right there, though. And then there's other decorations in here, knickknacks. Uh, knickknacks are kind of, like, undesignated. They just make people happier. It's just like random objects in all fairness. Like sometimes it's like wall sconces. Sometimes it's like little tables and chairs that they can gather up next to. But I find that it's good to decorate. It makes, it keeps the peasants happy if they think they have some sense of patronage in this area, okay? So there you go. They're putting our little dorm room together. They're adding in the flooring. Looks good. Be careful with that laminate. It might off gas a little bit of formaldehyde. And there's all of our beds. And so what you'll see is little guys will come in here and sleep. And then this room right here has a guy who's employed in it who's basically like a janitor slash butler. All that he does is make beds. So these people are very, very picky and finicky. They won't sleep on unmade beds like that one. And so the guy that works here, he's a steward. He just walks around and makes beds. And as you can tell with the knickknacks, there are little tables in this case. And there's a lantern right there. So, you know, there's some fun stuff that you can do with some of the things you have available. You really, really can. Uh, we're going to need another storehouse, though. Like, another storehouse is going to be pretty much required in order to keep ourselves moving in the way that I like to keep myself moving here. So I'm going to put in another storehouse right here just so we can have, like, everything stored up. Yeah, that looks good. Just do that right there. And whatever we can fit inside that building is what we fit inside that building. We have so much wood laying around that it honestly shouldn't be a problem fulfilling all of these orders. Sooner or later, we are going to have to build a wall around this city to protect us from, like, marauding hordes and people trying to murder us and, like, spread all of our viscera along the soil. But for right now, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I assume the game might warn me when that phase of the game is beginning. But I don't know. I don't know. So there you go. That building's now done, and we will go over here, and we will make another stockpile. There. Yep, pile my stocks, please. And then we need crates. So I will go crate, and crate, crate, and no crate, I guess. They don't want me to have a crate right there. They're disappointed with my building sizing. Okay, so we got that right there. Uh, the other thing that we can do is maybe put in... 
like another messy row of crates around here somewhere. I'm going to try and keep them lined up just to kind of make the place look somewhat less aesthetically triggering, but there we go. Perfect. Storage crates for our stuff. I should be able to enable just about everything after that's done. And we've got a little bit more wood laying around. Does this guy still... I think I need to get rid of this job. So this counts as a room, even though it's not. So you got to go to delete room. If you're trying to learn how to play this game, you can delete room inside the little pickaxe menu. And then you can get rid of the job flags, just in case you didn't know how to do that. Because I assume a lot of people probably haven't heard of this game. And then we're just going to move our wood chopping area over. We're going to put it like... Right there. And it'll reassign some of the civilians to do it. I'll probably put another one over here too, just to make sure that we always have a lot of wood. I don't know how many employees we have right now. I, I still haven't really gotten... I haven't gotten crazy used to the UI just yet. So like, I know where it says our workers at. I don't know where it's going to list our total workers at. It's probably right here. So yeah, total population is 25. Employed are 10 right there. We have three days worth of food. Rations are at level 1. So immigrations, they want the comfort of knowing there's enough food to store to last them at least all season. Build stockpiles and stock them with food from farms and hunters to get more people to join you. That's easy. Okay, so let's set up some hunters then. Hunters are this little flag right here. And it looks like this area does have a lot of animals, so we'll put a hunter flag over there. This area has a ton of animals, so we'll put a hunter flag right there. And they'll just automatically go out and kill all these critters. And they'll bring the skins back and they'll bring the meat back and everything will be okay. I absolutely love the soundtrack in this game. I cannot express to you how much I adore the soundtrack. Like, it's got like a definite, um, what was the name of that lady that did the Redux? She does like Celtic music and she did a version of The Highwayman, which is an old poem that was really, really good. It kind of reminds me of her. It's got a very, very Celtic aesthetic to it. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so anyways, there's our stockpile. We gotta set this one up too. So I'll probably set this one up to hold more food. Some cotton inside of there. I'll probably set it up to hold some metals. I'll probably set it up to hold pretty much like everything in all fairness. We'll probably grab some of those right there. Tell them to go fetch it if they want to go get it. What else do we have around here? Oh, we need meat storage too. Yeah, throw in some meat right there. We'll actually throw in two meats. And then we've got stone so we can fetch that for sure. Uh, maybe a little bit of coal storage and like maybe some iron storage possibly just some oh we already did that cool Well, then we'll use the last one for crates No, we won't use the last one for for tools actually We'll use the last one for skins so that they don't just like lay out there in the weather and rot Perfect and so as you can see they're stocking up all of our goodies and our throne room is no longer an over glorified storage closet feels good man I no longer live in the janitor's closet that makes me happy as a king, okay? I'm out here trying to be the Konunger, and they, they, you know, I'm trying out here trying to be the Keenig. You know, I'm out here trying to be the boss, and it's hard, man, to show you how to be the man, how to be the boss, how to come through with seven coats of the gloss, show you how to be the man. I'm going to add another fruit farm over here, and then I'm going to add another kern farm over here. There we go, more kern. More kern and more goodies. Uh, looks like we've actually got some pretty good bales over here. Are you guys... Did I... I did put cotton in here. I was just making sure. I wasn't positive about the cotton. But I do need that to be stockpiled so that, like, maybe later we can use it for furniture and tapestries and stuff like that just to make our kingdom look sexy. Uh, there's a dead animal right there. So they're apparently doing a great job at murdering animals. Fantastic. Good job, everybody. I believe in you. I would also suggest that we beautify the streets a little bit down here. So we've got a road and we've got a fine road. Uh, yeah, let's just kind of run this over to here. That sounds okay to me. It's going to take a lot of stone to get this done, BT dubs. But, not really avoidable. Not really avoidable. It'll make people happy, though, and it'll make our city look less like trash. And so that's good. Don't be like Forky. He's trash. Come on. Get that road laid down. I know this is some serious, intense work. I wouldn't wish concrete work in the summer on anybody. But sometimes the gerb just needs to get done. It needs to be finished off. Nice. And we'll probably put some decorations and stuff around here, too, just to make the city look a little bit nicer along the public thoroughfares. 
And so now they get a happiness bonus whenever they're walking around town. And for the little storage guys that are doing all the running and, you know, lifting and heavy carrying, that's going to be important because they spend a lot of time on the roads. This guy's a squatter, huh? So he really doesn't have a whole lot going on right now. I feel like if your job title is squatter, things aren't going so great for you right now. Let's go ahead and run this road down this way just to give us some more room to build. And then we'll kind of run this out here too. I don't know where that road's going to go over there, but I'm praying we have enough stone for this job. It appears as though we're going through stone with some rapidity. I may be dedicating myself to stupid tasks right now, beautifying my city before we have the basics taken care of. But you know what? Splat wills it. We will spend all of our money on infrastructure and become a trade giant amongst the realm. Little steward over there just working his ass off, trying to get all the beds made before the giant influx of sleepers happens. I feel it. I feel it. Now let's go ahead and add another quarry up here. How about that? So a second quarry. How many people do I have employed right now? We have 15 people employed out of 35, so we've still got a lot of leeway for what we can accomplish as far as our raw resources go. So we've got two lumberjacks just over here jacking it like it's San Diego. I don't know what I want to do with this space. I'll probably turn it into something little like a tailor shop or something. We've got a pooper over here. Just in case. Maybe I should do some poopers then. Got a bathhouse they can freshen up and relax. Dude, we need a feasting hall. That's what we need. Yeah, brother. Let's have a feasting hall. What good is a city that doesn't have a feasting hall? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, throw in the feasting hall right there. Like, if there ain't no other jobs to get done, you might as well get the feasting hall finished off. Do they get wood from the trees they chop down during construction jobs? I actually haven't watched that a whole lot just yet. I like watching the little characters while they do stuff and just like seeing what they get up to. Games like this are always fascinating to me that through programming and like arithmetic, you can basically make all these things happen on screen. It's nuts. I was a programming major when I first went to college, but I kind of washed out. I wasn't very good at it. I changed majors after I got to my junior year because like it just, I found I did not enjoy programming. I think it takes different personality types. And so, like, some people really, really enjoy that kind of iterative mathematician thing all day, every day. I'm kind of a lazy bastard, and I'm also kind of dumb. And so, between those two attributes right there, programming didn't work out so great for me. Between the laziness and the stupidity, I think it just wasn't for me. Dude, are we, like, out of food right now? When's our next harvest? Oh, they're not bringing in the harvest. That's the problem. Okay. Well, they'll bring it in at some point. It'll just lay out there in the sun for a while until all these jobs are done. Job's done. Dude, our city's looking pretty raw right now. It's looking pretty good. Like, we're kind of, like, moving on up right now. I'm pretty proud of us. So how many fruits did that give us? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, what our stockpiles are looking like. I'm glad to see the table full of fruit and goodies again. I think we should have kind of, like, a rotated stockpile right now where things are going pretty well. But I don't know when winter is going to get here. It's the third day of Ottomana. Okay. So on the third day of Ottomana, I don't know if they're going to keep farming. But we are going through food kind of quickly. Yeah, these guys are kind of fatties. They're kind of eating a lot of food right now. Maybe they should stop that. I kind of feel like maybe I should add in like another big crop over here. Yeah, just kind of get that field done. I think we might starve during the winter. Like it kind of depends on how the hunting is going to go. But yeah, I don't think many people are planting in winter. It's just a... It's just a feeling that I get, is that winter is not the time for... We got like 23 crops left, and I think they eat once per day or something like that. We do have a lot of meat, though. Yeah, we have 81 meat right now, so apparently we're just going to be like protein junkies all winter. We're going to build up some muscle mass, all right? We did our carbo loading during the off-season. And now we're just going to eat a ton of meat. Well, thank God for hunters, am I right? Let's get to the back end of winter right now. It seems like most of the seasons are like three days long. So it should be easy peasy. 
Well, they're eating through it pretty rapidly, actually. They are eating food much more rapidly than I expected. Hopefully, we have some stuff laying around out there that they can make use of. Uh, with this building right here, we wanted to make this into a feasting hall. Let's make this into a feasting hall so that we can have big Viking feasts. And so there we go. We need tables first. So we'll put in a couple of feasting tables. And then we've got, like, decorative... Oop, that's not what I wanted. I'll put in some decorative stuff, like, right there. Yeah, that looks good. A little bit of decorative stuff. Yep. What's the point of a feasting hall if it's not, like, you know, tastefully appointed? Apparently, I, those are textiles right there. I thought they were processed wood from the picture that I saw, but apparently they're textiles. We don't have those yet, so maybe carpets later. But carpets are unimportant to the overall thing we're attempting to accomplish right now. Yeah, stockpiles are looking a little dry right now. Yeah, I think uh, one of our guys died. <laughs> He's just a dead guy in the middle of the road. Just be like, hey, what's going on? Yep, just a dead guy in the middle of the road. Don't worry about me. Just hanging out over here being dead. Just hanging out being dead. Hopefully my hunters get to it. I can move the hunters if I need to. Yeah, because I see nothing but corpses out here. So let's find a new space for our hunters to go. Um, hunters, I need you to get me some food, please. What is that? A Smilodon? What the hell is a Smilodon? Like a dinosaur? I don't know what a Smilodon is. Does it want to hurt me? Can you guys hunt the Smilodon? Yeah, go hunt the Smilodon. Let's, let's, let's make him not smile so much anymore. How about that? If we don't bring in some food shortly... I think it's going to be a tough season. I don't see any more animals over here. A couple on that side and a couple over here. So we'll get them all lined up. Hopefully this will result in new foods. Yeah, there it is. They've already killed something. So see, you tell people, you give them the old kill order, and they listen, and they hook to it, and I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. My name is Splattercat. This game is called Songs of Six. And we'll see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. If you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below so that you can check that out if you don't know who I am and what I do. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming so that you don't have to. I do and take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time.